Hello everybody, I'm Lakota from NYR Mediums and this is Splatter Sessions. I've been posting my artwork on social media now for a little over a decade and been selling consistently for about half that time. After recently returning to YouTube, there were a handful of requests for me to do a tutorial series. So I'm excited to do this. Uh, I like sharing what I do. I love doing the time-lapse painting videos. So I think this should be an interesting experience. The only thing that I ask is if you do paint along, please post them on Facebook or Instagram and tag me in it so I can see what you did. Okay, so. First thing that I like to do whenever I'm getting ready to do a uh, watercolor piece is prep the paper. And by prep the paper, I mean get it messy. And take a brush that is short bristled and stiff so you can take and flick the watercolors onto the paper. We are going to do a pretty grungy look on this one. Let's say that you're working with brushes and don't have a short, stiff bristle. Another way to get the job done. Get the color on a different brush. Just blow. You want to let this sink in for a little bit, kind of let it bleed into the paper. And then go in with a piece of toilet paper or a napkin and just dab it. There's no perfect way of doing this, so you uh, want to take and dab it or wipe it. Don't matter, but there is a distinct difference in what the paper is going to look like when you do that. swirl look on it. Now for this one we're gonna just take and like try to figure out where the ground is at. I'm gonna go right there. Okay, ground laid out. And the reason I don't like to have it sit too long on the paper is because um, unlike a gouache, they are acrylic, they get waxy. It's a very waxy color. And uh, so whenever I go to ink it afterwards, after I'm done laying all the color down, the ink won't stick to the paper as well. And it's just, it's kind of a hassle. Also, you will notice that the paper, whenever you get it wet, has a tendency to bend. And you just grab it, bend it back in place. So with the watercolors, they dry up real quick. So you can go back. I, this, if I wanted to, on this down here, I could start inking it right now and it would be fine. All right, so now I'm just gonna take, figure out where you want your tree.
once in a while, kind of go through, grab it. Okay, so I'm happy with this basic shape here. Now, to break things up, lighten it up a little bit, we're gonna do that splatter effect, but we're not gonna have any color on the brush. This is just gonna be straight water. We'll take and break up the ground a little bit. Let it sit, but not for too long. Once you kind of start seeing the color bleed out of the paper, you know, that's kind of an indicator, hey, it's, it's go time. I'm gonna start dabbing this off. And just kind of put some texture into whatever it is that you're painted, the ground, the trees, the faces. Um, yeah. Okay, and then we're going to put some sort of creature down here underneath the tree. Again, I like things grungy and sloppy, so I'm just going to take a little bit of the light blue, kind of splatter this around down here, let her sit for a second. And then right down here is where I want my monster to live. You know what? So I've got my blue laid out. I put on this piece of paper. Because this is where I kind of mix the color and add a little bit of white to it. Just give it a more pale blue and then a hint of the black. And you just mix it to where you like the color. We'll throw right down in here. I'm going to go back in with either straight water or you can add a little bit of white to your brush. More water than white though. Figure out where you want his eyes to be, how many eyes you want him to have. We'll go with, um, boop. Put him there. Dab it off. Another eye. So you're just essentially removing color that you put down. I'm gonna do a real simple body on this guy. Let's take some black. Uh, I'm gonna take a mix of black and this lime green. Yeah, I can dig it. I'm gonna give him a little bit of a bell body here. He's a little pudgy. Getting into the cookie jar. We'll do a little black and brown mix. Um, and just throw some little beep, beep, beep. Dab it off. Alright, we got a cute little creature. Creepy dead tree. I'll take a mix of black. 
a little bit of white. Just give it a gray. If you have a gray in your palette, then hey, that's fantastic. Um, for some reason, Crayola has decided they don't need gray on their palettes, so you got to mix it yourself. I'll just take and kind of go up on these corners like this. I don't need to be symmetrical because I've never seen a symmetrical cloud, and that's what we're shooting for. These uh, clouds are going to kind of frame in our picture. I'm going to break up the bottom here with some red. I'm going back with a stiff bristle brush. All right, so the coloring portion of the video is done. And uh, this is what we've got. I let this sit for about a day. So when we did this guy's body and then kind of in the tree trunk here, you'll see that you can, almost like looking through a ghost, you can see the hills in the background. Uh, don't worry about that because once we get this inked, um, you won't be able to tell a difference at all. The ink is what makes everything kind of pop out. The whole point for me whenever I'm doing watercolor is this, I just want hints of color behind the ink. Anyway, that, that's really all I have to say about that. Let's get to inking. Let's, let's do this thing. Okay, to start, I like using a small tipped marker and uh, I try with, when I'm inking, I try working from this side over as much as possible. Uh, reason being is uh, like today, which I'm sorry, I really wanted to get through this without having to turn the air conditioning on, but uh, it's like 150 degrees outside. <laughs> it's, I set it to like 77 in here and it's still hot. So uh, the reason I work this way is in case I sweat, I don't make any of the ink bleed whenever I pass over it because it happens. I've ruined pieces doing that. So it's just something I try to do now. And I think it's a, a decent practice, but you do, you know, you do you, whatever you want. Okay, um, so whenever I ink, we'll start with the tree. I got my inking style, my line work style, I guess, from uh, looking at people like Alex Pardee and uh, guys like that in the low ground team, that, uh, that style. So... That's where I get all my wrinkles from. Uh, I'm up like that. Oh, my dogs have decided to start barking or growling at each other. That's fun. So let's say here. If I've got my lines going this way, see how I make the little wrinkle going that way? Generally, I want to have the other side of that branch coming the opposite way. That's just me though and uh I don't know, it makes it it makes it flow better. Yeah, you know, the work process and um, I think visually it flows better. And I just try to keep that path So I'll do the out the outside of the object first. You can kind of mix it up. We want to throw some like bumps in or something like that. I, I do my shading in two parts, and I'll explain that a little bit later, but um, what you want to do after this, and you can do it after you complete the whole, uh, the whole painting. Uh, I like to do it as I go along, but go through and do your shading, 
and so I'll use kind of like a cross hatch and let's say uh, the lights coming from blah, there okay I'm just gonna go underneath and okay come on marker work with me go through hit the underside of all these branches a little bit darker towards the tips down and right here in the nooks you really want to you really want to hit those you don't want to overdo it to make them too like I kind of went a little bit too hard on that one I made it almost just like a solid black you you want some texture in there you don't want to have a heavy hand when you do this this is actually a, a new marker so it's honestly a little bit darker than I would like it to be I tell people too whenever they sit down to do a painting you're fine envisioning the basic idea of how you want it to come out but it's never going to come out the way you see it in your head there's always going to be differences and that's why this is fun Stephen King was talking about when he writes books I think he's only done three or four books where he mapped out what was going to happen in the story, uh, which I find interesting. He sits down with his typewriter, and he has no idea how any of his stories are going to end, because he says that would be boring, and uh, that's that's my take on artwork too. And unless I'm doing a commission. I don't want to know how it's going to turn out. Half the time I just sit down with a blank piece of paper and, or a canvas and just start painting with no clue where it's going to take me. And that is honest to goodness where your best artwork comes from. I, I sincerely believe that. Even whenever I do commissions, I worked on uh, the hardest working for bands. <laughs> they. Um, a, they're artists too, and they want the uh, want the control over typically every aspect of the album. And uh, so I've always told them, I'm like, hey, this is going to turn out so much better if you give me a basic idea of what you want and let me run with it. And uh, every time I've done that, I've gotten an A+. Plus. Whenever they start saying we want this, 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 and start micromanaging it, it always turns out like crap. All right, for a shading goes on the tree, I think I'm done. We're gonna move on to. I I throw a lot of texture into the ground, but uh, to start off, I just take a fatter marker. edge, put in my bumps and my ridges. Okay, we've separated ground from sky, from background. Now comes the fun part. This is the, this is like meditation for me whenever I work on uh, putting texture into the ground as I just go into autopilot. The whole ground will eventually look like that. Another crosshatch situation. You just want to put some more lines down in here. To separate it. To make the tree pop out a little bit more. There. Alright, um, I guess let's work on the creepy little dude. I always start with the eyes and I base the entire face off of the texture and the skin surrounding the eyeballs. Uh, so, oh. We've got a set of peepers. So then I start doing the wrinkles around the eyes. Basically, whenever I do 
faces, I try to do the smallest features first and then work around them. Do I want this guy to have a mouth? Why not? There we go. Teeth. Do the head. Little trick. So I started over here. I'll put a line here, put a line here, and a line here. So whenever I, I gotta do texture where there's a curve, if I put lines here and lines here as I'm working, for some reason I, it's like you subconsciously start straightening out your lines as you get towards the middle. Life hack. On to the clouds. My clouds are always lumpy bumpy. Like a cloud. Sometimes I feel like I overuse clouds to, uh, to frame in my artwork, but I like it. I like clouds. They're cool. They're super cool. I actually, funny story about clouds, because one thing that I do whenever I make my clouds is I make them drippy. Add a little black drip to it. So, uh, fun story. This was a while back, and I had just started to gain some ground, I guess, in the social media art culture, which I have met some fantastic people through Facebook, through Instagram, just super encouraging people, and I've never really had an issue, except for this one guy uh, his name's so stupid, but, um, I won't say it, but I got a, uh, I got a message on Instagram. It was for, I had done a commission for somebody. It was like a rhinoceros with a giant bubble on its back and a little floating heart inside. Fairly original idea, I thought and uh, still think to this day, um, but I got a message, and, the guy, and this guy was like, yo man, give credit where credit's due, and I was like, uh, I don't know what you mean, sir, um, care to elaborate, and he was like, your clouds, and I still didn't understand, but apparently the issue was that uh, I put drippies on my clouds, and he didn't like that. He also didn't like the point that the fact that I pointed out that uh, clouds tend to drip sometimes, and it's this phenomenon called rain. And he was ignorant. He got super ignorant. Like got a bunch of friends to go on and try to blast me. It bothered me for about a day. And then I realized the absurdity of the situation. And uh, I made it a point from then on to make all of my clouds uh, drip for the most part. So, hey guy from Instagram, if you're out there, I'm still doing it, dog. I'm still doing it. All right, the outline of the clouds is done. Okay, so we're closing in. I'm finishing this guy up. I'm happy with all the outlines. I'm happy with all the texture, all that stuff. So what I wanna do now is I'll take a, a medium sized marker and I'll go back over every outline. And what that does is it just separates each image from the background a little bit better. Anyway, you get the picture. You don't have to sit here and watch me go over every line that I've already made. So for the last part, we're going to do shading again. We're going to take and use a black or gray colored pencil. 
I like Prisma colors, but anything will do. And we're just going to kind of go around like the parts here that really need to be a lot darker, but to save ourselves from blasting through too much ink uh, and, and kind of overdoing it. We're going to use the colored pencil. And see, the thing that you can't do with ink is you can't move the color around once you put it down. So that's why I like finishing up my shading with a colored pencil. I don't want to overdo it here. You just kind of kind of touch up some spots, especially here in the clouds, with the underside of the clouds. Brush them up. And kind of hit the notches in between the trees, the tree limbs. a little bit all right last thing sign it it's done people that's a done piece all right we did it we've made a painting together or maybe you didn't paint and you just tuned in to listen to my soothing voice uh, massage your ear holes. Either way, I appreciate you watching very much. And if you did paint along with me, please tag me in whatever you created. I would love to see it. Uh, actually, I think that would make me um, extremely happy. Next time, I'm thinking about doing a tutorial on inking. I didn't fart. That was my hands. Maybe acrylics. I don't know. But uh, we'll definitely do this again because it was fun. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Make sure to subscribe and all that happy stuff. Have a wonderful day.